Hi Major. Nice to talk to you directly. I think it's the first time I've done it. Not a hundred percent sure, but nice to meet you. Uh, first of all, you say one of the, the major problems that you're having is that the Big Bang Theory is presumptuous of energy creating all the matter in the universe. Uh, and that you had difficulty believing this. Yeah, I can identify with that. It, it's, it's difficult to believe it, but that's only because of a lack of information. How you get that information, I'm going to go into at the end of the video after I've dealt with some of your points. Um, the way that uh, we know that matter and energy are interchangeable is because basically it was first revealed by E equals MC squared which is one of Einstein's equations which was used to explain where matter came from. At the time they had no um, experimental evidence to back it up but the the maths the way that Einstein expressed this interchangeability and the balance between the, the two things um, concurred perfectly with the observations that they did have and it was a working theory Einstein when he came up with e equals mc squared for instance didn't foresee that it could be used to make what you and I would call an atomic bomb that didn't occur to him. That, that came from later researchers. Um, obviously, the Second World War had started before the idea really became clear to somebody. Or at least, the method by which the energy within matter, that matter is composed of, could be released. It's very difficult to talk about these things in ten minutes and pick out the, the perfect explanation. The demonstration of the energy contained in matter, the perfect demonstration is the atomic bomb. Where do you think that energy comes from? It's matter being converted into energy. Now for you to understand the Big Bang, you have to understand how energy can be converted into matter. I'm going to put a link in the box. Um, surprising, I was surprised how few examples there are of energy, be, energy being converted into matter. When I first saw that comment on your video, I thought, mm, this is going to be a cinch. But it wasn't a cinch. It's a very good question. It's actually, there's only two examples that I've come up with. One is the one mentioned in the sidebar, which is a recent experiment involving um, focusing laser light onto clouds of electrons uh, and producing some electrons and positrons which are anti-electrons uh, so you end up with more matter more material than you start off with but it takes a shit lot of energy a shit load of energy in the same way that a small amount of matter can reduce uh, produce a lot of energy as in an atomic bomb it takes a lot of energy to produce a little bit of matter and the the idea behind the Big Bang is that there was energy galore, more than we can really conceive, more than any physicist in history could possibly conceive. They, they can imagine how much is required, they can write the numbers down on a blackboard, but whether a human mind can actually grasp what those numbers actually entail uh, is an entirely different matter. No pun intended. So yes, the Big Bang presumes that energy can make matter, and it's right, it's correct. Uh, e equals mc squared has been proved by atomic bombs, and the backwards process has recently been carried out by Stanford University in, I think, 1998. That's the, uh, the link that I've put on the side. Also, in particle accelerators, they take two small particles of a certain weight, mass, and fire them at each other. And sometimes although rarely in those reactions, they produce a particle which is heavier with more mass than the original particles which were fired at one another. That's an example of energy being converted into matter. 
In that case, it's the kinetic energy, the energy of the movement of the particles being converted into matter. The particles that are created don't last long. They're very unstable. They decay into other forms of matter very quickly, billionths of a second. But it's, it's been measured, and it does happen. Halfway through, barely explained anything. Your theory is that it's localized. Uh, that's wrong unless you take the ripples in the pond to be each firecracker to be a different Big Bang in a hyperspace. What you're talking about there is the multiverse theory, which I happen to find quite rational, and um, I'd follow that without any hesitation. I noticed that you were talking about an explosion. I expect what you do when you imagine the Big Bang is imagine a point of light in the distance flashing and then expanding. That's not the way to think about it. You're imagining yourself to be in a space watching the explosion from a safe distance. There was no safe distance. The only space that we know of was the space created in the Big Bang. The Big Bang didn't just create matter and energy. It created space and time as well. For you to have been there to observe the Big Bang, you would have had to have been within the Big Bang. Um, this is something you'll find out more of in time. Again, no pun intended. Now I want to talk a little bit about the research that you're doing. I think you're doing your research from the sounds of things from the internet. Now, I th also what I think what's happening is you are trying to run before you can walk. You're trying to punch above your weight at the moment. That's not an insult. It's quite natural to type Big Bang into a search engine, see a page come up, and to try and interpret what's on the page. It's a mistake. Your understanding is like a pyramid or a building. It needs foundation. You need the simple stuff before you can go for the complex stuff. You talked about being at a beginner's stage and not being at an, an advanced stage. I'm not an, at an advanced stage. I am strictly simple stuff. That's the only understanding that I can reach, but I know that when I turn a page of a book about the Big Bang or an article about the Big Bang, I kind of know what's coming. So I'm satisfied that I have a basic grasp of the principles, and that's all a, a person without a mathematical gift can hope for. I know you've got skill with languages, but you may be like me, and maths is a bit of a fog. And if that's the case, all you'll get is a basic understanding like mine. But to get it, you've got to have a foundation. Now, this book's getting a little bit worn out, merely because I'm holding it up to the camera so much. I'll put an, uh, a note of the, the book in the, the book titles. When I got this book, I got it because I wanted to know if the Big Bang Theory was right, or just how solid a theory it was and what sense it made. This was when I was 28. Um, I already had been interested in science, but I just didn't have enough background. What you need is a book which will take you almost from the times of the Greeks and tell you what they thought and why it was wrong. Experimental evidence to show it was wrong. You then need to know what the Middle Ages was all about, what their theories were and why they were wrong. Then you have to go up to the Renaissance, the post-Renaissance. It's an interesting story. You don't have to be afraid of it. It's, it's not dull. They'll sweep over 100 years in a paragraph without trying. Uh, but you need to know what ideas came before and why those ideas were wrong. Uh, and then slowly it builds up your understanding and it, it covers all the exits, if you like, and it leaves you with pretty much one idea, which is the idea that the universe had a beginning, a hot, bright beginning, and that that brightness turned into the matter of which you and I are made. I really feel like I've just flashed over this without giving you what you want. On the learning front, forget the internet. 
get books that's the only way to do it because books will start off with the basics your foundation and then it will build upon the foundation don't go in at the top floor and try and understand it won't make any sense go in at the bottom sounds faintly rude doesn't it <laughs>